hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is Choma of Choma stitches and today we are going to be learning how to sew a cow neck jumpsuit so um let's get straight into the cutting uh, the drafting of the basic bodies and i am going to be leaving in the description box the measurements you need to achieve this okay so you go to the, uh, the description box you're going to see the measurements needed and the fabric needed to cut and sew this uh, particular jumpsuit okay do where to go through the description box all right and so let's get into the drafting of this first of all um the length of the upper bodies we need is 17 inches so i'm going to be marking out 17 and half inches 17.5 inches the half an inch is going to be for joining the upper bodies to the lower bodies okay i've also gone ahead to demarcate this uh pattern into the half of the front and the half of the back so basically i use the biggest knot measurement on the body on the upper body to demarcate this uh pattern if you are drafting the lower bodies you also use the biggest measurement on the body to demarcate the lower bodies okay for these upper bodies the biggest measurement on the upper bodies is the bust and i've divided it by and the bust for this person is 40.1 inches um 40.5 inches and so i decided to use 11.5 that way to accommodate every alteration or whatever i'm going to do inside the pattern okay so next we are going to be imputing the measurements for this uh upper bodies the first measurement we are going to impute is going to be the shoulder measurement okay and for this person the shoulder is 16 inches divided by two with this eight inches so i'm going to mark it at eight inches and for the back part i'll be marking nine inches because we're going to be having a zipper at the back of this dress so i have nine inches and i'm gonna just one mark out the one inch all the way down so i don't get confused moving forward so this is our pattern and that is the zip uh the zipper allowance okay so i've marked that eight inches here i'm going to repeat the same thing on the front pattern And so next we are going to be marking out the armhole length to get the length of your armhole you divide your bust measurement by six and add 1.5 inches so 40.5 divided by six equals to 6.75 plus 1.5 inch and we have 8.25 so for the back piece i am going to be coming down by one inch for the shoulder slanting and then from that one inch i'm going to come down and mark the length of the armhole which is 8.25 and then for the front piece we're going to come down by 1.5 inches for the shoulder slanting and instead of coming here to mark the 8.25 i just measure the full length i have from the shoulder line the first shoulder line to the uh armhole line and i have 9.25 inches i'm going to come here and repeat the 9.25 inches so i can connect these two lines together and then i am going to bring down the measurement of the shoulder the eight inches i'm going to extend it down here so i can use my ruler to connect it and so now to get the uh the armhole curve we are going to for the back piece divide for the back piece you divide the armhole length into two so i can just fold my tape rule in half to get the middle of the measurement and i'll go in by half an inch and i will slant the half an inch to the shoulder slanting and then for the front i'm going to go up by 3.5 inches and i'll come in by the same one half an inch and i'm going to slant it as well to the one and a half inch shoulder slanting now i am going to use my curved ruler to connect these two lines to the armhole line okay so next we're going to be imputing the neckline measurement for the neckline of this we're going to be working with um you are going to use your bust measurement so the bust measurement is 40.5 inches to get the measurement the, the neckline you divide the bust measurement by 12. so divided by 12 i have 3.375 so i might as well use 3.4 or 3.5 inches so i'm going to mark 3.4 inches for both the front and the back 
And then for the depth of the back, I'm only going to come down by half an inch. And then I'll use my straight ruler to connect it to the one inch shoulder slanting. And then for the front, I'm going to come down by say five inches. I'm coming down by five inches and I'm going to be connecting it. I'm going to use my straight ruler to connect it to the one and a half inch shoulder slanting. Okay, at this point now we are going to repeat the other measurement and this particular jumpsuit does not have that. So it's going to make our work even way easier. It's going to be very, it's free but not too full, but kind of free on the body. And so for that, you have to get your bust measurement divided by 4 and I have 10.125. So I'm going to go ahead and use 10.2 or 10.3 for this and I'll mark it for the boots front and back. The waist of this person is 34 inches. 34 divided by 4 is 8.5. Because this dress is free, I am going to sort of adding a dart to reduce it. I am going to be adding half an inch. So for my 8.5, I'm going to be marking 9 inches for the waistline. I'm just going to use my straight ruler to connect this line to the waistline. Now this is the basic pattern we need. And then I went up by one inch on the neckline, even though it was not needed. So here we have our patterns. And so I made the mistake of cutting out the neckline, even though I didn't need to. So I had to place it back and use a tape to hold it down when it was time to create the cow neck effect on the front piece. So for this particular dress we're making, we want the cow effect to start somewhere around here. So I'm just going to use my straight ruler. I'm going to place my straight ruler here and I'm going to come up here. And I'm just going to draw a straight line. So if you want to know the accurate measurement of the where I came up from the armhole line, I went up by 1.2 inches. Okay. And now I am going to cut this open and slash it. So I'm going to place the fabric we're using to sew this dress on here. And then I'm going to use it to cut out the pattern. All right, guys, I had to return the part, the piece I cut out from the neckline. We are always too quick to cut out and forget that um, the design we are making may not require us to cut out and for that I am sorry and so if you're watching the video up to this point please rewind to the part where I had to cut out this place and uncut it okay um, please so I had to uh, fix it back I use a tape at the back to tape it back together and so um and my fabric is too big and I couldn't just manage it on one table. It keeps sliding down. So I have to cut out just a long piece enough to make the front pattern. Okay. Now what I have to do now is do the op slash and spread. Now when you are slashing and spreading your, your pattern, do well to open it so that you don't exceed uh, 7 inches. If you go beyond 7 inches and you get to like 8 inches or 9 inches, it's more likely, it's very possible that your your cleavage is going to start showing. So if you don't want your cleavage to show, avoid extending it too much. And although the more you extend it, the fuller it is, but it also has its own disadvantage where it now makes your cleavage to show. So I'm just going to open it to say 6.5 inches because I don't want the cleavage of this person to show at all. And now I am going to just rule out, mark it out around the pattern. You can pin this down first. And then you can mark out the patterns. Okay, so I have added one inch sewing allowance on the side. I've added half an inch sewing allowance on the armhole. And if, as you can see, I have added like half an inch around the shoulder line. I am going to go ahead and mark a straight line to match, to match this place. And I am going to come down for my neckline like half an inch. So this half an inch is just to indicate where our neckline stops so that we can join the, the shoulder from there. Okay, so from here, I am going to rule a straight line to meet the, to the end. Okay, now this is my pattern and I can go ahead and cut this pattern out. Now for the ease, for the ease that comes with you having your pattern and the facing together, I can fold this together like so from exactly where I've cut it fold it in here now however long you want it you can do it and this is just so that i can have a facing along with my 
a facing along with my uh, pattern okay so now I'm going to go ahead and cut it out Now this is a pattern. Okay, this is it. So if I open this up like so. So this is a cowl effect. Now this is it this is the cow effect we're trying to have on this as you can see um so the more you spread it in the more the more you spread it the deeper it gets and the more exposed your boobs are going to be and that is why we have this okay and so when we start sewing it i am going to first come here and i'm going to cover up this small opening we have here i am going to cover up this small opening and then join the shoulders the way you will normally just join it Okay, so one thing I also like to do when I am drafting a pattern is that for the back piece, I like to take out half of an inch around the waist area so that the zip around that place will not bulge. So that's what I'm taking out here. So I have a facing here for the back piece and I am going to use it to sew the neckline and turn it inside out and I'm going to also sew the armhole because this dress is not going to have a sleeve so I'm going to use it to conceal the armhole as well and I'll do the same thing for the front and here is the trouser pattern we're going to be using for this jumpsuit and it's already drafted I'm going to be leaving the link in the description box below so you can check it out how to draft this how I drafted this very pattern it will be in the description box below do well to check it out and to for this video to fit into one video that is why i am not redrafting another one and since it's the same measurement there's no point in drafting another one and that is the beauty of pattern drafting you get to use the same pattern whenever you want and however you want and so please check out the video on how i drafted this pattern in the description box below so for this pattern i'm going to be altering it to achieve what i want so i'm going to cut it open exactly from the middle here because I want this pattern, this trouser to be very full. It's going to be a very full palazzo trouser. And to alter this, I'm going to cut it open completely to the end. And I will spread it around to give it the width and size I want it to have. I will show all this after I have cut it out. Okay guys, so here I've transferred the patterns of the trouser to the fabric. And as you can see, I slashed this open and left it 2 inches opening at the this is the back piece and this is because the back part has very little uh, pleats at the waistline while for the front the front has uh, multiple pleats at the waistline and so all of this opening in the front we are going to be pleating it in same thing with the one at the back but the down part we want it to be this full because we want it to be a full palazzo trouser and so this is the pattern we are working with i'm just going to go ahead and cut it out and as you can see i've added um, 0.75 inches sewing so allowances on the sides and and for the back piece i added up to half one one inch over here because i'm going to be sewing a zip up to the um hip line okay so i'm going to go ahead and cut out this pattern right now and there it is i've cut them out okay so um here are the pieces that i cut out this is the back piece and this is the front piece and now i'm going to go ahead and start sewing it i'm going to start by hemming the the way the the hem with with her hemming gum so i'm going to place the hemming gun right on it like so i'm going to place the hemming gum like so and then i am going to fold it once and then use my steam iron to heat it up and it will stay like that and that is how i'm going to be hemming the down part of this dress okay i'm going to do it for the front and the back pieces and then i'm going to be making small loops loops with this i'm going to go ahead and fold them 
and make loops with them and these loops will be for the belt we are going to be using belt on the waistline of this because like i mentioned the dress is going to be free and so the waistline has to be held together with belt to give it curves and shape it's important okay and so this is the fabric i'm going to be using for the belt i just cut off whatever is left of the fabric i just made a long strip of it cut it off and i think the width is about when you fold it into two it's about 3.5 inches when you fold it in half in other words i'm going to go ahead and sew on one side with half of an inch when i turn it inside out we're going to be having it three inches like that and that will be the 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 rope or the belt we're going to be using for this dress okay and here is the the pocket the pocket for we're going to be using for this dress also this pocket was drafted from the trouser piece and like i said don't forget to go through the description box for the link to the dress, trouser drafting it's from the trouser drafting that we got this uh pocket piece okay so i have cut out the pocket piece four pieces that is two for each pocket i have gone to use the hemming gum to hem the the hem of the trouser okay and i've done it for both the front pieces and the back pieces together so you just put the hemming gum in between fold it once and use a steam iron to steam it so now i'm going to go ahead and sew here so since the zip is going to be at the back at the back of the jumpsuit this is the front piece of the trouser of the trouser pattern so i'm going to go ahead and sew here with 0 0.75 inch sewing allowance and I'm so from here to here for the for this back piece around the crotch area the zip is supposed to get close to this place and so somewhere around here I'm going to start from here I'm going to sew with one inch unlike the front uh, front piece the back piece has a sewing allowance of one inch because of the zip because of the zip sewing allowance so it's supposed to be have up to one inch from here all the way to here before I can now sew with 0 0.75 inches so I'm going to be sewing with 0 0.75 inches when I get to this place. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and sew it and then come back and we continue. And here is the rope that I cut out that we're going to be using for the for the jumpsuit. Okay, and it's very long actually. It's very, very long. And so I just went ahead to sew a straight stitch on it. And at the, after sewing it, I went the other way and I crossed over and I sewed over the first stitch like this so that when i turn it inside out you'll be seeing only the smooth part of the rope so to turn it inside out i'm going to be using my loop turner this is a loop turner it has a hook at the edge and this is it so i'm just going to pass it through the opening i left and i'm going to go ahead and pull this out i'll hook it inside lock the loop loop turner and then gently pull it out so this is the first edge this is the first edge of the rope as you can see so look at how clean it's looking this is the the seam line and so when you tie it this is the part you're going to be tying against your body to give you this clean finish also i have gone ahead to sew the loops these are the loops i'm going to be putting on the dress that on the shirt that this is where the rope will pass through these loops are going to help to keep the rope together as you can see this is how it's going to be the rope is, loop, rope is going to pass through the loops the way you see it on, on trousers and shorts and stuff so this is going to be i went ahead to make this one i folded it into in, in half twice and just matched on it okay i have six pieces here i'm going to be having two in front two at the back and i'm going to show us how to attach it when i'm attaching it i'm also going to go ahead and iron this so i'm going to go ahead and pull out the other part of this rope and i will neatly iron the rope okay so let's set this aside and then here is a trouser i have gone ahead to sew it i'm going ahead to sew it um with half with 0.75 inches is the front piece and this is the back piece i sewed the back piece as well and i left the this the seam allowance where the zip will be sewn here okay so i started sewing from here so we're going to have the zip come all the way to this place all right so on this front piece now it is time to attach the pocket so let me show us quickly how we are going to attach these pockets and so here is the pocket you have here um it depends on how you placed it on the fabric when you are cutting it out or how you cut it out from the pattern piece okay so i'm going to be sewing it like so i'm going to take this one like this 
and I'll place it here, right side facing right side. See, right side facing right side, and I'm going to place it like so. And I'm going to go ahead and sew with one and a half inches. I'm going to sew with one and a half inch all the way up until seven inches, and I'm going to make a curve like so. So let's say this is seven inches or 7.5 inches, whichever one. If you have big uh, big fingers, you can use up to 8 inches if you want. This is so that your hand can fit in perfectly. So I'm going to go here and I'll come out by 1.5 inch. So from the top here is 1.5 inch. I'm going to go ahead and sew on this 1.5 inch. When I get to this place, I will just go ahead and make a little curve around the edge here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew like this and curve it down here. Like so, I will do the same thing on the other side. Okay, this fabric is quite slippery. I have sewn the pockets, as you can see here. I've sewn the pocket with one and one and a half inch, and I go here and curve in. So now I'm going to go ahead and trim out part of this sewing allowance, and then around the curved part, I am going to make notches very close to the sewing line. Very close to the seam, but try not to rip the seam. Okay. And then I am going to open it this way. And I will top stitch it on top of the pocket piece. Okay. I will top stitch it on top of the pocket bag. I am going to go ahead and top stitch it. And then when I top stitch it, just like I have done here, over here, look at this. I've top stitched this one on the pocket bag. So now I am going to be taking the pocket cover and I will place it like so on top of the pocket and I'm going to go ahead and sew with half of an inch all the way to here. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one now and repeat the same thing on this side. Okay, so here I have gone ahead to attach the pocket cover and we have a pocket and so I'm just going to go ahead and fold this thing pocket like so. And this is it. So you have the pockets here, this way. So I'm going to keep this down and I'm going to use a pin to hold it down until it's time to attach this to the upper bodies. Now it's time to work on the front piece, the upper bodies. So this is the upper bodies for the back piece. So here, I am going to go ahead and attach this one to this. And I'm doing this because it is time to sew the zipper. So I am going to go ahead and sew this to this place. I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And remember we made the down part to be full. So the brown part is fuller. Let me reverse this like so. So we have the back, the upper bodies underneath. And this is the lower bodies. And like I said, we're going to be pleating the excess of the back piece of the lower bodies to the upper bodies. So I am going to pin this here. And so whatever is left here that is in excess, I'm just going to go ahead and make two pleats, just two pleats for the back piece because we made sure the back piece does not have too many excess. So I'm going to pleat it like so. And so I'm going to go ahead and sew it for the other side and the other side too. And here it is. I have sewn it. So I have attached the upper bodies for the back piece to the lower bodies of the back piece. And now it's time to sew the zipper. And I'm just going to go ahead and attach the zip. I'm going to sew the zip and sew it on this other side as well. And then I will bring it back to tell us what next to do. Okay, so here is the piece for the front. And so I'm just going to fold it in like this. I'm going to sew this little neckline piece. I'm going to sew in this neckline and so I have attached the zip. Okay, so now um, I'm going to be attaching and uh, sewing the facing for the zip for the back piece. Okay, and so for this facing for the back piece here, I am going to sew the neckline.
I am going to go ahead and sew the neckline for this back piece. I'm going to sew the neckline, top stitch it, and then you sew the armhole of the back piece. I'm going to do it for both sides. And then for the front piece, I have sewn here. You can see, and this is how it's going to come together to give us the, the cow neck. And so for the neckline, for the armhole for this front piece, the lining piece is not enough to go around. So like I said, we're going to be using a bias. So we're going to be using a bias to turn around this neckline for this front piece. So I'm going to go ahead and use a, a bias to sew on it. And so for this neckline for the front piece, um, instead of sewing just here, I didn't want to have this pointed edge here. I now decided to sew like making an arc somehow made a curve here to eliminate this pointy line okay that is the only sew purpose you can also make yours and just cover this place and leave the pointed line but i didn't want it so i took it out and i did the same thing here as you can see so this is the armhole i've used the bias to to conceal the rough part of that armhole as you can see so we have the front piece now ready for us to attach it. This is the, the cow neck. We're going to now attach this to the lower bodies. Just like I did for the back pieces here. This is the middle of the front upper bodies. I'm going to match it to the center of the lower bodies. And pin it and just like I did for the back piece I am also going to be pleating the excess fabric on this uh, front piece on the lower bodies to the upper bodies but I will not be pleating the pocket area so this is what I'm going to do so this is what I'm going to do I am going to pleat see I took out the pocket part and I'm going to go ahead and pleat what is the excess here. So now that I have pleated it, I've pleated it on the bodies, I can now cover the pocket. So note that I did not pleat the pockets. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and sew. So for this back piece, here is a little something to note. I have concealed, I've used the lining piece to conceal the neckline as you can see like this and now the reason why i added this this uh, facing after sewing the zip is because i intend to use it to conceal the zip as much as i can so i'm going to be using it to conceal the zip as much as i can so we've sewn the neckline sewing in the top of the zip inside now i'm going to fold it down like so and i am going to go ahead and sew here like this so i'm going to run this straight stitch and come back and show us how it looks concealing the zip inside as much as i can now i have used the facing to sew the zipper as you can see run a stretch this holding the zipper so now i can open this place like this and this is the reason why we had the lining piece at the back part you can see this okay this is it and this is the back looking clean so the next thing i'm going to do now is now i can now fold in the armhole so i'm going to flip this this way and then i am going to go ahead and sew i'm going to go ahead and sew the armhole with a straight stitch i have sewn the lower bodies and the upper bodies of the front piece together Okay, and in the same vein, I have sewn the armhole of the back piece. Okay, now I am going to be sewing, joining the shoulder lines together. But before then, I'm going to be attaching these loops for the band. Okay, and now we want the band to be around the waistline. And so for that, I am going to be placing this around the waistline. And so to attach this on the waistline, I'm going to be putting one by the pleats at the back. So I'm going to put it just by the middle. So I'm going to be sewing this here and this one. 
this is it i'm gonna put this ones like so and one is gonna be here too no one is going to be in the in the middle of the front so i'm going to put one here i'm going to put one here so i'm going to put one here and one here i'm going to take the back piece and place it on the front piece and now it's time to sew the shoulder so i'm going to be passing my hand from underneath the the facing of the back piece and i'm going to be picking up the shoulder line of the front piece and then pass it so And so I'm going to go ahead and sew the shoulder line and then sew the sides together. Sew the sides together and sew the crotch area and we are done with the dress. And then I'm going to put it on the mannequin to show us. Okay guys, so this is the end of the class and this is the beautiful outcome of our dress. As you can see, here is the cow neckline and you can arrange it however you want. It gets to fit in. And like I mentioned, because we did not uh, overextend it when we were opening the part, the slash and spread you do not show the cleavage even on the mannequin even though the mannequin has a pushed up bust it's still not showing the cleavage so um this is the effect and here is the back so this is the back of this beauty and yes it came out really beautiful and it will look better on the human um here is the pockets this is beautiful and so um here is the rope and because it's on the mannequin, I didn't pass the rope through the loop. So when it's on a human, of course, you press, pass it through the loop. and Or however you want. And because the loop is made of the same fabric, so even if you don't use the loop, it hardly is gonna, it's not going to be noticed. Okay, so see you guys in my next sewing tutorial. Please don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Um, also, turn on your notification bell because I drop beautiful content every now and then. So you don't miss anything. Um, you can also share this video. I'd appreciate that to help this community grow. So see you guys and bye-bye.